Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of our open online course for Einstein Summation Convention. Today, we're going to introduce you to the basics of Summation Convention, outlining vector addition, where we consider the components of vectors, multiplying scalars to tensors, and the importance of free indices in Summation Convention. So, without further delay, let's get on with it. Consider two vectors, such as b is equal to b1, b2, b3, and c equal to c1, c2, c3. And if we add these two vectors together, the result is another vector. Why is this? Well, this is because we add together each component of each vector. So let the vector a be equal to b plus c. Because we're adding together each component of b and c, a will have the same number of components as b and c. The values of a are as follows. a1 is equal to b1 plus c1, a2 is equal to b2 plus c2, and a3 is equal to b3 plus c3. Using the index notation we learnt in the previous episode, we can shorten these equations down. ai is equal to bi plus ci, for i is equal to 1, 2, or 3. As you can see, it means that for the three equations we have above, all you need to do is replace i with 1, 2, and 3. This is where we will introduce summation convention. Summation convention omits writing for i is equal to 1, 2, or 3. Remember, we're working in three-dimensional space, hence 1, 2, and 3. Let's now have a look at a scalar. Remember, a scalar is a single, real number. Because of this, multiplying a scalar to a tensor of any order is simple. For example, we have a second order tensor, a, i, j, and a scalar, mu. Multiplying a scalar to a tensor simply means we are multiplying mu to each component of a, i, j. We denote this multiplication as mu, a, i, j. Can you think of how we apply mu to the matrix form of a, i, j that we saw in the last episode? Let us now consider a more complicated example, with both tensor addition and scalar multiplication. Let's have a look at this equation. Sij is equal to mu Tij plus Ai Bj. Can you recognise the parts of this equation that are scalars, which are vectors, which are first order tensors, and which parts are second order tensors? Firstly, we have both Sij and Tij as second order tensors. Ai and Bj are both first order tensors, or vectors, and mu is our scalar. What can we tell about this equation from our knowledge of tensors? Well, Sij is a second order tensor, and so it must have 3 times 3, so 9 components. The same goes for Tij, which is also a second order tensor. This means Ai Bj, which is two first order tensors, with different indices, multiplied together, must also have 9 components. Why is this? Consider the list of all components of this equation. What if i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 1? Well then, s11 is equal to mu t11 plus a1 b1. If i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2, then s12 is equal to mu t12 plus a1 b2. If i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 3, then s13 is equal to mu t13 plus a1 b3 and so on and so forth. The term AI BJ has nine different combinations in a similar way to our second order tensor. Just to note, we get a completely different result when the indices of two vectors are the same, such as AI BI. We will consider this case later on in the course. Let's have another look at this equation. SIJ is equal to mu T IJ plus AI BJ. You can see that each index appears exactly once in each term. We define an index that appears exactly once in every term as a free index. We must have the same free indices on each side of an equation, sum or difference. Let's have a look at some examples. Which of these have free indices, and which of these make no sense in terms of what we've learnt about summation conventions so far? Sij is equal to Tji plus Tij. This is fine as both i and j appear exactly once in every term. Sij is equal to ai 
brackets bj plus cj. This is also fine. We expand the brackets to get ai bj plus ai cj. ai is equal to bj plus ci. This makes no sense as i doesn't appear in the tensor b and j doesn't appear in the tensors a and c. sij is equal to ai brackets bi plus ck. This also makes no sense as when we expand the brackets we get ai bi plus ai ck where i appears twice in one term but appears once in the other two. What other faults can you spot with this equation? There are two more to spot. Okay, that's all for episode 2, but before we finish, let's just have a little recap of what we've covered in this video. Do you feel comfortable with how vector and tensor addition works in terms of its components? The way we multiply scalars to tensors? Evaluating the number of components of a more complicated equation? Evaluating the number of components of a product of scalars and tensors? The definition of a free index. Identifying whether or not an index in an equation is a free index. Okay, thanks for watching.